So you have a bunch of points, and you have a circle, and you pose the question to your computer, which points are in the circle? Well, a circle is just a set of points, one radius from its center, so we need to calculate the distances of all points in the circle's center, and only choose the ones which have a distance smaller than the radius. Problem is, we need to do this for every single point, that doesn't seem bad until you realize how often you might need to make these calculations. Let's say you're running a bouncy ball simulation with 10,000 balls at 60 FPS, and you need to figure out which bouncy balls are colliding by determining which ones are sufficiently close together to collide. We can do this by seeing whether each ball is within the radius of every other ball. With this naive approach, how much work will you have to do? Well, it's 10,000 by 10,000 by 60 that equals 6 billion calculations per second. How do we cut this down? Now, subconsciously, your brain is probably screaming at you, asking, why do we have to check these vast swaths of points when it's obvious that all of them could never be within the circle under any reasonable circumstance? To your brain will respond, first of all, don't scream at your human, they provide your nutrients and oxygen, and secondly, what a perfect segue into the topic of this video. Quad trees. Quad trees allow us to eliminate large areas containing points which are obviously not in the circle. So what are quad trees anyway? Let's build one from the ground up. We start with a bunch of points on a 2D plane in a square in which all the points reside. We only have one rule. If a square contains more than one point, it is to be split into four smaller equally sized squares. I will call the big square the parent square, and its four small ones the child squares. Data-wise, the parent square will contain references to its children, and the data for the points the parents stored will now be stored in the child containing it. Let's add the points to the quadri one by one following this rule. Now for the circle. The key thing here is figuring out which squares intersect the circle. We can safely discard those which do not intersect the circle, because any point in a non-intersecting square cannot be in the circle. Some of you may wonder why this would speed up anything, because each square only has a single point. Fortunately, by virtue of the tree-like structure of the quadri, we can begin by checking the largest squares first, eliminating several points at once. With all that said, here's our entire th process in a single cohesive paragraph. For a given square, check whether it has child squares. If it has child squares, repeat this process with any child square intersecting the circle. If the given square does not have child squares, it must contain a point, and that point is to be added to a list of other points we think might be in the circle. Let's see this in action. Now that this process is complete, we have a list of candidate points that may or may not be in the circle. Now we just need to do the distance test we did before. And done. A few of you may have noticed that there was something very important that I glossed over. How do we insert the points into our quad tree in the first place? Checking every square to figure out where a point goes is wildly inefficient. Fortunately, there's a simple solution to that, which again leverages the tree-like nature of the quad tree. Let's say we want a point here. We know it's in the big square. Which one of its children is it in? That one. Which one of that one's children is it in? This one. Which one of this one's children is it in? That one. And so on and so forth. Because each parent references their children, we just need to go down the tree, arriving at the smallest enclosing square. And if there's already a point in that square, no big deal, we just subdivide it. Now, in theory, quadri should solve this problem faster than the naive approach I showed you all earlier. The skeptical among you may wonder if this is really true. I applaud that. It's good to not blindly accept everything you hear. Let's see how this stacks up in practice. Here's 10,000 points. I made a script that will return an array containing the points within the circle using our naive distance checking method. It also returns the time it takes to complete this task. Let's see the results. Now let's see how long it takes to create and use our quadri to accomplish the same task, and compare the two. Wait, what? The quadri took 65 milliseconds to accomplish something the naive approach did in 5? That makes the naive approach 13 times faster! How could this be? Was this all for nothing? Can we do no better than mindlessly slogging away, measuring point after 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 point No. Stop. We can do better. See, we weren't being bottlenecked by finding points within the circle. The bottleneck was the creation of the quad tree itself. We can test this by logging the time it takes to create the quad tree and the time it takes to find the points within the circle separately. See, most of the time was spent creating the quad tree. We saved 3 milliseconds actually finding the points within the circle. Of course, you might argue that quad tree creation should be counted regardless, since you obviously need to make a quad tree to use one at all. However, consider the fact that we might need to find the points within additional circles. Since we don't need to remake the quad tree each time, each subsequent circle will only add another 2 milliseconds compared to the 5 it would add if we used the naive approach. With 100 circles, we would have saved 300 milliseconds, which is more than makes up for the 70 or so it took to make the quad tree. Now what about the number of points? I repeated the same experiment with different numbers of points. Here's the results. The quadri outpaces or matches the naive approach at every level. However, the naive approach starts to catch up at higher values, which is totally unexpected. Strangely, if we increase the maximum number of points per square to 8, this problem becomes less pronounced. I didn't expect that either. My conclusion? I blame JavaScript. So to conclude, quad trees are great for this kind of thing when you have to do many calculations on a large, but not too large, number of points. So remember, like, comment, subscribe, check out my other videos, and give me your credit card information. Thank you.